Thank you all for joining. Glory to the Creator. The ten tribes of Israel historically identified with the Aborigines of the Western Hemisphere. By MRS. Simon. Names and Titles of the Creator. The character of the Holy One of Israel, being a manifold unity of moral glory, the distinctive manifestation of which originated those names and titles which served to express his powers, it may be useful as a subject of intellectual contemplation, as well as illustrative of that portion of the subject under review, to trace to their Hebrew one source, those surprising analogies which are demonstrative of the origin of the Peruvian and Mexican theology. Tonacatyukli, Lord of our bodies, or life, was he who resided in the garden of Tonacuatitlan. Omidacuatli, Most High, is another title. He is represented crowned as supreme, and is the father of Quetzalcoatl. Tezcatlipoca, God of Heaven, is another title, and is, under this character, assigned the first and last place in the calendar. He is emphatically styled the God of Fire, and is described as holding forth a mirror, surrounded by thick darkness, or density, on a mountain, and is said to have the wind as a messenger. Zyulita certainly, derived from ethereal blue, is another title for the God of Heaven, who is also said to be the God of Ages, or Years, the Eternal Yoa and Teo. Hutzilipakli, and Vitsilipatsli, are other titles for the Supreme, as the Great and Terrible One, who they affirm, time immemorial had, as their leader and protector, done marvelous things. Underscore 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 1C Appendix Names and Titles of the Creator 51. Tlalakatutli, Master of Paradise, is another title, and Quetzalcoatl, whom they believe to have partaken of the divine and human natures for the purpose of redeeming whatever had become the prey of transgression and death, through the first introduction of evil, is precisely characterized as the Messiah of Moses and the Prophets. Not only did the Mexicans believe in the incarnation of the Eternal Word, and that redemption which should be the result of his obedience unto death as the second Adam, but they, like David, contemplated, as a part of future history, his burial and descent into Hades, fully entering, as their paintings testify, into the meaning of these words Thou wilt not leave my soul in Hades, nor wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Again they testify of his ascent to the Father, and of his receiving gifts, precious and manifold, for his people, of whose redemption from the power of death and the grave, his resurrection was the earnest and pledge. Thou hast ascended up on high, thou hast led captivity captive, and thou hast received gifts for men even for the rebellious. Again, they represent the risen Lord, and Son, of David, as for a season sitting and waiting at the right hand of power. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Jehovah hath sworn and wilt not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. But what is still more demonstrative of the minuteness of detail in their knowledge of the order of these future events is, that they recognize a time when his foes having been made his footstool, the same underscore 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 whom David celebrates by his name, Yah, as the ruler of his redeemed people, is subsequently represented on his underscore 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 1 Psalm CX 5 52 Names and Titles of the Creator Throne of Mount Zion, where, in honor of his inauguration, underscore 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 underscore, the Lord, acts at his right hand. 1 It was the opinion of some Spanish writers, that Quetzalcoatl received the title of Hutzalapochtli, from the belief that he ascended into heaven. They also thought, that because Tonacatyukli is compounded of a word signifying precious, and left hand, that therefore it was at the left hand of Tonacatyukli, that he was seated, but this is drawing inferences from an arbitrary analogy, in contradiction to established national usage, for the right hand of the Incas, and kings of Peru and Mexico was esteemed the place of honor. Baron Humboldt observes, with reference to this circumstance, the right hand of Montezuma, it is to be observed, was the place of honor, and see that it was so amongst the Jews may be inferred from the expression in the psalm on his right hand did stand the queen, and see. Hence it is more probable that Quetzalcoatl was seated on the right hand of Tezcatlipoca, than on the left, as Bacharini affirms in the following curious passage of his idea of a new general history of America, this divinity was called, 
as well in the first as in the second age, Hutzilipochtli, from their ancestors believing that he was seated on the left hand of Tezcatlipoca, as they now believe in the second age, that he is on that of Quetzalcoatl, and being uncertain on which hand paid more. Respect to a seeming analogy in the language than to Mexican usages, and so confounded the right hand with the left. Humboldt in Antique Mex. Underscore 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 underscore. 1 Psalm CX. 5. 53. Names and Attributes of the Creator. Extracted from Antiquities of Mexico, Volume 6. Xayalitl, in the Mexican language, signifies blue, and hence was a name which the Mexicans gave to heaven, from which Xayalitl is derived an epithet signifying the god of heaven, which they bestowed upon Tezcatlipoca, or Tonacatuctli, who was painted with a crown as lord of all, as the interpreter of the Codex Teleriannoritnensis affirms in the 107 page of the translation, to whom they assigned the first and last place in the calendar, emphatically styling him the god of fire. Xayalitakutli may bear the other interpretation of the god of ages, the everlasting one, which connected with the Mexican notion of fire being the element more peculiarly sacred to him, recalls to our recollection the ninth and tenth verses of the seventh chapter of Daniel's description of the vision of the Ancient of Days, from before whom issued a fiery stream, and whose throne was like the fiery flame. P. 392. Daniel says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Daniel's description of his vision resembles in its imagery the passage in the ninth chapter of the sixth book of Sehagan's History of New Spain, in which the newly elected king, of Mexico returns thanks to Tezcatlipoca, who was Xayalitacutli the god of heaven, or the god of years. The deity worshipped by the Peruvians under the name of Pashikamac, and of Viracoca, the former of which signifies. 54 Names and Attributes The Creator, was the same as Tezcal. The Father, the Great Light, the Son of the Great Light, and the Brother of the Great Light, to the last of whom the Moon might have been dedicated, as the Sun seems to have been to the first. Humboldt observes, that the Teocalli of Mexico was dedicated to Tezcatlipoca, the first of the Aztec, divinities after Teotl, who is the supreme and invisible being, and to Hutzilipochtli, the God of War. Tezcatlipoca is he who appeared to that nation on the Mountain of the Mirror, and they say it is he who tried Quetzalcoatl. The Doer of Penance. Antique Mexico P100. How truly surprising it is to find that the Mexicans who seem to have been unacquainted with the doctrine of the migration of the soul and the metempsychosis should have believed in the incarnation of the only son of their supreme god, Tonacatuctli. For Mexican mythology speaking of no other son of god, except Quetzalcoatl, who was born of Chimelman, the virgin of Tula, without man, by his breath alone, by which may by signified his word or will, when it was announced to Chimelman, by the celestial messenger whom he dispatched to inform her that she should conceive a son, it must be presumed this was Quetzalcoatl, who was the only son. Other authors might be adduced to shew that the Mexicans believe that this Quetzalcoatl was both God and man, that he had previously to his incarnation existed from eternity, and that he had been the creator of both the world and man that he had descended to reform the world by endurance, and being king of Tula, was crucified for the sins of mankind, and see as is plainly declared in the tradition of Yudican, and mysteriously represented in the Mexican paintings Humboldt in Antique Mexico p. 507, Notes Of the Creator 55. Tonacatuctli was believed by the Mexicans to reside in the garden of Tonacuatatitlan, he was the father of Quetzalcoatl, and was named Omidacutli, which signifies the Most High, that word being compounded of one, twice, which particle, when prefixed to an adjective, has an intrusive force, like the Latin ter. The meaning of the proper name of Tonacatuctli, is the Lord of our bodies, or life, and it is to be remarked, that the Hebrews styled Jehovah, the Lord of all flesh, or of all living things, the expressions being synonymous, because animal life cannot exist without flesh, hence it is apparent that the tree of life was called, with the greatest propriety by the Mexicans, Tonacuayotl. This tree must have been celebrated in the Mexican mythology, since it has a distinct place assigned to it in the Tonalomital, or Mexican calendar. P. 517, 18, Notes. Yaoali Taicatl, which proper name signifies obscurity and wind, 
l that epithet having been applied by them to the deity, for the reason contained in the ejaculation with which the first prayer in the sixth book of Sehagan, commences, O valiant Lord, beneath whose wings we shelter and defend ourselves, and find our protection, thou art invisible and impalpable, just in the manner of obscurity and density. And here we shall take occasion to observe, that Acosta, not knowing that Yeoalikatl, compounded of Yoali, night, and Ihekatl, wind, was an epithet belonging to Tezelcatlapaca, led him into the error of asserting that the Mexicans adored night, wind, and darkness, on the festival of Tezcatlapaca, imploring their succors and protection, and he has fallen in almost the next sentence into the graver error of maintaining, that the religion of the underscore 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 one the same word ruash characterizes spirit and wind in the hebrew language small 56 names and attributes mexicans did not hold out threats to the wicked of any punishment in a future state p 523 acosta in the twelfth chapter of his Natural History of the Indians mentions the resemblance which he perceived between the Temple of the Sun at Koshko and the Pantheon at Rome. The commentator on the Mexican Antiquities observes, that this resemblance was not pointed out by Acosta in reference to the style of its architecture, but to the images, and see which were placed in it. And this remark, whatever might have been the association of ideas which led to it, could scarcely have been expected from Acosta who evidently not caring how many gods the Peruvians owned, provided they had more than one, says in the 13th chapter of the 56th of his Natural History of the Indians, S.I. Universa Indice Lingua, Nomina Evolvamus Ex Omnibus Tarnan Ne Unicum Invenium Us Quad Dia Genuinum Sit, Ic O C Apud Hebridios L, Apud Arabs, Allah, It Tam in Cusco, Quam in Mexico. Idia Quixote Hispanicum Vocabulam Dios Imitantur, Illud defi ni un iac explicant per proprietates indicorum idiomatum, quorum frequentia et varia sunt. In venturing to use a tone of levity in speaking of an author whose willful errors on some material points do not entitle him to unqualified praise, it is by no means our intention to disparage the merits of so justly celebrated an historian, who still it should be recollected had a theory to support, and became later in life rector in the College of Salamancha a proof that his writings were not disagreeable to the age in which he lived. A concession however in the very passage in which he intended to demonstrate that the Indians had no idea of one supreme god, and that the Peruvians did not adore him under the name of Pashikamak and Viracocha, paves the way to the important question, whether if the Saracens worshipped Jehovah under of the Creator. 57. The name of Elohim, or Allah, the Mexicans might not equally have adored him under that of Yo. And if the former epithet, and C which was in the earliest ages revealed to the Jews, and believed by the more ancient patriarchs, became the war cry of the Mahometan hosts, why may not the latter have been equally profaned in the New World in hymns, and CP 528, notes. Sehagan nowhere says that they attributed divinity to the elementary portions of nature, fire and water were in no manner considered sacred by them, but as the symbols of Zayulat Akutli and of Chalchiatlaku. P530, Notes. Garcia says of the Cayapans, the chiefs and men of rank in Cayapa, and C. call the Father Icona, the Son Veka, and the Holy Spirit E. S. Ruash, one and certainly these names resemble the Hebrew, especially the last, for Ruash is spirit Garcio's origin Los Indios, in Mexico Antique P122. Herrera remarks of the martial and tutelary god whom the Mexicans represented as seated upon an azure globe. The Mexicans notwithstanding confessed a supreme God, the Lord, and Framer of the universe, and he was the principal object whom they adored, looking up to heaven and calling him the creator of heaven and of earth, and the wonderful, with other epithets of great excellence. P64. With reference to one of the Mexican paintings, the commentator thus writes the plate represents him who when it appeared good to him breathed and divided the waters of the heaven and the earth, and see. He had no temple nor did they offer sacrifice to him, so that here we see the pride of those who despised God long ago from the beginning has displayed itself, since the devil has chosen to underscore 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 one underscore 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 in Isaiah 8. 
10 from the want of R. The E.S. Ruash of the Kaya Pants was pronounced by the Mexicans Ayuach. 58 Names and Attributes Apply to himself what St. John says of God, that on account of his greatness no temple which our gratitude could erect would content him. P. 198 They speak of the Supreme Deity Quetzalcoatl, or more properly speaking Demon Tonacateuctll, who was also called Sidonatontli, who, when it appeared good to him breathed forth or begot Quetzalcoatl, and see when he sent his ambassador they say to the Virgin of Tula. They believed him to be the god of the wind, and he was the first to whom they built temples perfectly round. They say it was he who should effect the reformation of the world by penance, since according to their account his father had created the world, and men had given themselves up to evil, on which account it had been so repeatedly destroyed. Sidonaden at Lai sent his son into the world to reform it. We certainly must deplore the blindness of these miserable people, against whom St. Paul says, the wrath of God has been revealed, one inasmuch as his eternal truth was so long kept back by the injustice of attributing to this demon what belonged to God, for he being the sole creator of the universe, and Ho who made the division of the waters which these poor people have attributed to the devil, when it appeared good to him, dispatched the heavenly ambassador to announce to the virgin that she should be the mother of the eternal word, who when he found the world corrupt, reformed it, too by doing penance, and see for our sins and not the wretched Quetzalcoatl, to whom this miserable people attributed this work. They celebrated a grand festival on the arrival of his sign, as we see in the sign of the four earthquakes, because they apprehended that the world would be destroyed on underscore 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 one it would be difficult to show in what other sense than in that of their invaders this can be applied to the tribes of the new continent to the evidence of our senses demand that this term should be put in the future tense of the creator 59 that sign as he had foretold to them when he disappeared in the red sea which event occurred on the same sign as they considered him their advocate, they celebrated a solemn festival and fasted p. 208. Jerusalem and her king, compared to a hen ready to protect her brood under her wings, as well as the analogous metaphor of shadowing like a tree of spreading foliage, was familiar to the ancient Mexicans, and was frequently employed by them in their prayers to the gods, Quetzalcoatl is emphatically styled maker and creator, as in the following passage of the 25th chapter of the 6th book of Sehagan into which brief space many Jewish notions are crowded. 1. Underscore 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 underscore. 1. My dear daughter, precious as a gem and as sapphire, who art good and noble, it is now certain that our Lord, who is everywhere, and choose kindness to whom he will, has remembered you, and see. Perhaps your sighs, and tears, and the lifting up of your hands before the Lord God and the prayers and supplications which you have offered in the presence of our Lord, whose name is obscurity and density, in watches at midnight, have merited his favor, perhaps you have watched, perhaps you have employed yourself in weeping and in offering incense in his presence, perhaps for the sake of these things, our Lord hath dealt mercifully with you, perhaps on this very account, it was determined. Before the beginning of the world, in heaven and in hell, that his kindness should be shown to you, perhaps it is true that our Lord Quetzalcoatl, who is the maker and former, asterisk has shown you this grace. Perhaps it had been decreed by the man and woman divinely named Ometaculi, and Ometacotl, and C. Take care, O oh my daughter, not to allow yourself to feel proud on account of the favor which has been shown to you, take care that you say not within yourself, I have conceived. Take care that you attribute not this favor to your own deserts, for should you do so, you will not be able to hide your inward thoughts from our Lord, for nothing is hidden from him, be it even within either rock or tree, and thus you would excite his displeasure against you, and he would send some chastisement upon you, slaying your child in the womb, or causing it to be born an idiot, or to die in tender infancy, or perhaps our Lord would visit you with some disease, of which you would die. For the fulfillment of our wish to have children, depends upon the sole mercy of God, and if our thoughts are at variance with this truth, we defraud ourselves of the boon which he vouchsafed us. Perhaps daughter, pride will render you unworthy of letting the light behold that infant which is about to come forth to this world. A tone of Jewish sentiment, it must be confessed, pervades the entire of this address. 
while Christian ethics, scriptural allusions, and Hebrew customs, are all wonderfully mixed up. Notes, P516. Asterisk a scripture expression signifying creating and regenerating power, who created the O Jacob, and formed the O Israel. This may apply to the feminine underscore 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 underscore, wisdom, and this is the more probable, AI we find in the term Omedi Kotal the symbol of wisdom, viz. Serpent. 60 Names and Attributes It was customary for the priests to dress themselves in the same costume as that accorded to the deity, whose feast they celebrated, hence it may be inferred from the stone which M. Humboldt describes, as dedicated to Tezcatlipoca, which supposition will serve to explain the nature of the ancient symbol worn on the advanced foot of the principal figure, since the Mexicans, in allusion to their belief that God had appeared to them in fire and smoke on Mount Tezca, the Mount of the Mirror. When the proper name which they bestowed upon him of Tezcatlipoca, compounded of Tija, the name of the mountain, three dark, and Poca smoke, in reference to the manner of his manifestation, always represented him with the symbol of the smoking mirror which was placed on his head, or his foot, and sometimes on both, as in the 18th and 22nd pages of the Borgian Miz this god was named by the Mexicans, Yo, and the smoking mirror on his foot reminds us of the prophet's description of the presence of Jehovah. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet, and see. One whilst the proper name of Tezcatlipoca, recalls to our recollection the 18th verse of the 19th chapter of Exodus, descriptive of the descent of God upon Mount Sinai. So important an event in the Hebrew history as the promulgation of the Mosaic Code of Laws, might it readily be conceived, have disposed the Jews, who are fond of bestowing many names upon God, either to use at first, or invent in later ages, an epithet commemorative of the times when he conversed with Moses in the mountain. They likewise emphatically styled the laws that were given to them the mirror of God, declaring that they beheld in them, as in a mirror, his will clearly revealed, and hence they argue that underscore 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 1 Habakkuk 3 5 Of the Creator 61 the law has one never been repealed, because the will of God must needs be immutable. Sub notes, P1. The Mexicans style led Tezcatlipoca, valiant lord, because they considered him the god of battles, by which title he is expressly designated in the prayer which the Mexicans addressed to him, beseeching of him victory over their enemies, which prayer will be found entire in the third chapter of the 66th of Sehagan. A short extract is here inserted not only because it contains the above-mentioned title, but on account of the Jewish tone and sentiment which pervades it, and its scriptural phraseology too and likewise it serves to illustrate an observation of Torkmata, in the note to page 245 of the volume, and inasmuch as your majesty is lord of battles, on whose will depends victory, who forsakest when thou wilt, and standest in need of no counsel from any one, since thus it is, I supplicate your majesty to deprive our enemies of reason to make them as drunkards, in order that they may throw themselves into our hands, and without harm to us, may all fall into the hands of our men of war, who endure poverty and hardship. O oh, may it please thy majesty, since thou art God, and canst do all things, and ordainest all things, and art ever employed in directing the affairs of the universe, and in ordering and providing for the prosperity and glory and honor, and fame of this thy commonwealth and CP 523. The notion of Tezcatlipoca protecting the people beneath his wings, which metaphor was employed by the ancient Mexicans, who emphatically styled themselves his people. Underscore 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 underscore. One think not that I am come to abrogate the law. Sooner shall heaven earth pass, than one jot or tittle of the law fail. Matt V.17 Malachi 4. 4. 2. The Mexican oath was as follows, I swear by the sun, and by the existence of our sovereign mother the earth, that nothing which I affirm is false, and in confirmation of my oath I partake of this earth. The adjuration of Moses is analogous. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, and see. 62. Names and attributes. And their kingdoms, and the throne of their kings, God's throne, and his seat of judgment, strongly assimilates itself to the language of David in the fourth verse of the 91st Psalm. 
They likewise considered the supreme god their shield and buckler, the proper name of Chimalman, one which is derived from the Mexican name for shield, and being compounded of that term by the elision of the final syllable Li and Man, devoid of signification, as is most probably here the case, and which would perhaps have been Mar, but that the Mexican language too wants the letter R, may not unreasonably be supposed to have been the Virgin of Tula, the mother of Quetzalcoatl. P. 523 Du Prats, who had a special intimacy with one of the guardians of a temple in a tribe near the Mississippi, was informed that by their word expressive of the deity, they mean a spirit surpassing other spirits as much as the sun surpasses a taper. The guardian said in comparison of this great one, all else were as nothing. He made all that we see and all that we cannot see. His is perfect goodness. He made all things by his word, or will, that subordinate spirits are his servants. The superior order of these they call his free servants those being the spirits always in the presence of the master of life and ready to execute his will with an extreme diligence. That the air is the region of many good and evil spirits that the latter have a chief who is more mighty in evil power than all the rest who had become so daring, that the great spirit had bound him, so that he could do the less harm. Adair, who lived long among the northern Indians, says. Underscore 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 One A curious feature of identity in the Hebrew and Aztec migration, is with reference to Miriam, who under the name of Chim Alman, was shut out several days from the Aztlan camp in consequence of her quarrel with her brothers, the leaders of the Aztecs, or Mexicans, Num 12. 15 Antique Mexico Vol. 6. P. 367. To the Mexican language wants the B, D, F, G, R, and S. Of the Creator. 63. These tribes believe the higher regions to be inhabited by good spirits, whom they call Holy Ones, or relatives of the Great Spirit, or Holy One. They say accursed beings possess a dark region the former attend to favor the virtuous and just amongst men the latter accompany and instigate by their malice, the vicious. Several warriors have told me that the concomitant holy spirits have forewarned them by intimation, of danger of which they were not aware at the time, but which afterwards they have found to have been inevitable. Pushikamak is represented as sitting upon an animal not unlike a cherubim, the figures of bird, beasts, and sea may allude to Pachacama, or creator, under which the Peruvians adored their supreme god, one for although they believed, as did also the Mexicans, that the supreme deity was incorporeal, they still, like the Hebrews, acknowledged him in the human form. God's promise to Jeremiah, Thou shalt be as my mouth, was known to the Mexicans, since the newly elected king of Mexico, in a prayer of thanksgiving to Tezcatlipoca, there emphatically says of kings in general they are thine instruments and thine images to govern thy kingdom, thou being in them and speaking from their mouth, and they declaring thy words. Kircher says, that none of their symbols were without secret meaning. The mirror in the hand of Tezcatlipoca denoted his prescience, which beheld everything as in a mirror, and the skull and heart, according to Torquemada, signified that he possessed equal power over life and death. P. 419. Underscore 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 underscore. One the Peruvians regarded Pachacama as the supreme creator and preserver of all things here below, they adored him in their hearts as the invisible god. Vega. 64 Names and Attributes of the Creator. Hutzilopochtli was called Yao. It is singular that he should have been called the Ineffable. P. 145. Hutzilopochtli is a compound name. Bacharini derives it from Haurtzatan, the lord of the tribes during their peregrination, and supposes that their leader represented the Creator whom they have worshipped time immemorial before they commenced their wandering life under Honatzatan. Some say this divinity is a pure spirit, others represent him embodied as a man, this god, having been the protector of the tribes led them, according to their account, during many years of their wandering life, and at last settled them in the place where they built the city of Mexico. On his head was a beautiful plumage shaped like a bird, on his neck a breastplate composed of ten figures of human hearts, in his right hand a rod one in the form of a serpent, and see. This description, the human hearts, the compound name, the divine leader, and C, and the story of his incarnation, compared with the metal which represents a tree with the seven tribes, or houses springing from its root, are in the main, however, 
obscure and blended, just such fragments of tradition as might have been expected from the descendants of the ten tribes, without letters, for so many ages. Underscore 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 underscore. One Torkmata observes in the 48th chap, of the 13th book of his Ind Mon that a wand was placed in their hands, which they believed would sprout on their arrival in paradise. Dr. Bodino, in his Star in the West, observes of the same traditionary rod or branch, the Indians have an old tradition, that when they left their own native land, they brought with them a sanctified rod, by order of an oracle, which they fixed every evening in the ground, and were to remove from place to place on the continent, till it blossomed in one night's time. See Clave Jarrow.